Dire team ban. Hey guys, welcome to the GEST June main event and it's of course powered by Western Digital Corsair as well as Gigabyte who are the ones that hosted this tournament. Tonight we have Mythtrust vs Joe Elite Team. This is the group stages if I'm not mistaken. It is a best of one. The winners will play against the other winner from the other set of matches. And of course I'm your host, Lysander like Zenora, casting on behalf of Beyond the Summit and I'm joined here by Gods today. Gods, how are you doing? Oh no. Is he talking? Not so sure if he's talking. Uh, I think Gods, I lost him there. Did I lost him? Yeah, I lost him there. So hopefully Skype does get him back. Uh, that wasn't the intro I was hoping for, but yep. Anyway, Gods will be joining me later. Gods, are you back? I'm here, how are you? Hey, hi Gods. Uh, well, we just started the game. Didn't really miss much. It's only a Nick Sass and Bad Rider band. So I was just telling them uh, that we lost you on Skype for a moment there. But yeah, got you back. How Skype you doing, likes man? to play up, but it seems, it seems better now. I'm good. You've just got off work. I've just been sitting around drinking wine all day, so I'm ready to cast some Dota. <laughs> oh, you're living it, living it up. Uh, remember guys, as always, during the draft, uh, it'll be time for you to relay any feedback and um, sound problems. Just treat it as some sort of testing, well, testing the mic uh, session here. So hopefully there are no more sound problems, no more frame rate issues. There shouldn't be any. It's been happening for quite a while now. So yeah, do tell me anything in the chat as soon as possible. But yeah, I'm very excited to see Miftras, of course. Uh, one of the contenders for the East qualifiers didn't really make it, but still a very talented team. And Joe Elite still... I would say they are the underdogs in this matchup, but still, I wouldn't say they are out of this. Yeah, I definitely had one of the teams who were very close to getting invited to the qualifiers and who every now and then will cause an upset. Mythtrust are a lot of fun to watch, so they play a really cool style of play. Lakels loves to farm, but they also can be very aggressive and pick some exciting heroes here. Yeah, they, they go with the lifestealer. I mean, the open wounds did nerf his aggression quite a bit here. It, and I, if I'm correct about this, Lakels doesn't really play this lifestealer. He, he usually plays something else. The uh, lifestealer goes to... If I can if I can remember this TNK or Abba. I it's normally TNK. I yeah. think they'll play him in the off lane, maybe with an offensive tri lane and pick some kind of solo hero for the Kells. Like they'll solo an anti mage or a morph lane. Even they'll pick him a carry, but it'll be like a solo carry. Or it could be the Alchemist. He had the yeah. record for the GPM, the highest GPM <laughs> if I'm not wrong. Yeah. There was a yeah. screenshot a while back, about fourteen hundred GPM, I'm not so I sure. I think it was like 1450 or 1466 or something, and that was the, it's the highest GPM ever in a professional game. Like, a, it was a competitive match. I think it was from the AMD Premier League, maybe. Yeah. I think there's been higher in matchmaking games, so that was in an actual match that he got that GPM. Yeah, so he, he's gonna probably be very proud of that, but right now, Mythtrust gonna go for more of the supports, the Shadow Demon Life Stealer. But what really actually got my attention, of course, is the Tree and Protector pick. It seems to be going infecting all, all parts of the world right now. It started off with DD and. Navi, if I'm not wrong. I mean, a few European teams started picking him up, and then everyone picked him up. And now it's all spread to Southeast Asia as well. We see Zenith as well as various Southeast Asian teams pick him up as well. So the living armor is just so strong. It hasn't changed much over the past version, but people are just discovering him now. It started with Go Black, and it's it's spread. It's spread like wildfire. I don't like this hero very much. I don't. I, I just I, he's not very interesting. <laughs> I, I, living armor. He has one very very. Overpowered spell and then three kind of Meh. okay spells. I guess Le Leech Seed got buffed, so Leech Seed is a lot better than it used to be. But um, he's actually an okay hero against Life Seal because the overgrowth does go through rage, so you've got the ability to disable him when he's in rage form if you cast the overgrowth after he rages. But it's still a nice little pickup here. They'll be looking to probably just win the solo lanes because you can basically turn a soul a one v one lane into a two v one just because that hero has a living armor on him. Yeah, the. I, I heard from LD the other day that you really hate <laughs> Triumph Tector. And yeah. yeah, it just came to me now after your comments. And yeah, I can understand why Triumph is such a, a tough tough hero to deal with. You can hate him. He's it's like a very boring support. Too. <laughs> support. I also just thought he was. I, I mean, I, 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 just, I went off. I, I would go on rages about how he's the worst hero in Dota. Obviously, he's not the worst hero in Dota, but I like to sometimes pretend he still is. But we'll see how he does here. Um, I know. Honest, I, I see some people questioning Joe, Joe Elite team having a bot on their team. It's actually um, 
one of their players, Don yeah. Juan, who's uh, tagged up as bot passive. Oh, Don Juan, the solo mid player. So I was wondering where he was. And yeah, he's actually a tensor player. He has, despite his team losing to some better teams, such as uh, some some other teams that I've seen them play against, like Zenith, uh, Myth Trust. I've seen them play Myth, uh, Mineski, I think. I'm not so sure about that. But I've seen Don Juan. He excels. Even if his team does lose, he tends to do pretty well in his middle lane. So looking to see some great plays from him. Of course, one of his best heroes will be Quop as well as TA. Uh, seeing him play those two heroes to very great effect, but Quab's banned out by their own hero, uh, own captain right now. So, not so sure what they want to get for it. Maybe the DK in this case. Yeah, DK probably the best hero to have in the mid lane. Yeah, you don't often see DK anywhere else except in the mid lane. He does okay as a farming hero, but generally you want to get lots of experience on him, and he's not really a hard carry. He's more like a tanky frontline brawler. Um, so, Alchemist gets picked up. There is your hero for Lakels. This is yeah. almost definitely going to Lakels. Yep, and Alchemist, do we see him going for the standard stuff, the Shadow Blade into maybe BKB or something else like a Maelstrom, or do we actually see him go for the Radiance, you know, uh, try to fight off the Living Armor? Of course, his Essence Spray already does a lot of that, as well as reduces uh, Dragon Knight's own base armor. Do you think he'll go something unorthodox like that, or will he go for something standard? I don't think, I think we'll go pretty standard. I don't think you go for a Radiance. I think it's there's normally two ways to play Alchemist. It's either like the super big high GPM farmer, which is normally how Lakels plays him, where you either go for uh, like a Midas Shadow Blade or you go Midas or into a Battle Fury or something. He, I think Lakels likes to go Battle Fury quite a lot. That's where he gets his highest GPM. Or you go straight for a more ganking build, which is where you maxed out the uh, unstable concoction first and you go for a sh fast Shadow Blade. But I think most likely he'll go for something like a Battle Fury. Yep, and we see Joe Elite actually pick up the Darkseer here. The Darkseer is one of the. I would say the counters to the living armor is a really good is a really good hero because the iron shell does tick in 0.2 intervals. So within a second, you lose your entire armor stack. So it's it's really really good against uh, trade protectors. So Joey Elite being well, you could call it a block pick, but still Darkseer is one of uh, one of the best heroes to go in the off lane. He can go anywhere off lane, solo, tri lane, even the jungle. So it's a good pickup and the storm spirit, of course. Well, it's going to be the carrier for life stealer at the very least, and his mobility is not to be looked down upon. Yeah, this is really a lot of great, you get the lifestyle bombs coming into play, and he's just a good solo mid hero to have in general. Uh, you know he's most likely going to be up against the Dragon Knight in mid lane, which is a good lane for Storm Spirit. He's not going to win the lane, but he should have a pretty easy time. He's not likely to get ganked as well, because Dream Protector is not a ganking hero. That's one of the weaknesses of this series, that he can't really gank. Any gankers that Joe Elite want to get has to be their other support, who is pretty much going to be ganking on their own, because Dream Protector just sort of looks to get some levels, use his living armor from afar. He's not very good at roaming around the map, so Storm Spirit's pretty much guaranteed to have a pretty easy time he reaching level 6. Yeah, of course, unless he gets caught out of position by the Dragon Knight. And of course, Joe Elite do have their last pick. It could be a Doom, do you think? There's a space for a Doom here. Uh, that might get them a lot of melees, but still, uh, Doom is possible. We did see it in a couple of times in the Alien Wake Up as well as DSL. Yeah, DSL. Yeah, He's, Doom became very popular. Um, they definitely need something which can dis have a strong disable. Uh, right now, they only have that really the Dragon Knight Sun on the Storm Spirit, so they need another disable. Doom is nice, but they probably also need a, a good support here. So Rubik would have been really good, but it got banned out. So mm -hmm. maybe even Jakiro's banned out. Most of the big supports are banned out here, so it's going to be quite uh, tough to decide what they want last. Maybe even just something like a Sand King. Yeah, but Joe Elite right now, they have a really, really strong uh, AoE team lineup because they have, of course, yeah, the DK to troll the fireballs and everything. They have the Trium Protector. His overgrowth is great, but combined with the Vacuum and the cooldown, that's devastating. So Myth Trust has to be very careful about, posi about positioning here. Rage does not block the overgrowth, so he has to be very careful when he actually decides to pop it. And of course, Global Silence is going to make sure he does not pop it and make sure Silence uh, Storm Spirit doesn't move anywhere else. So it's a good pick, I think. Silencer, a little bit underrated in the pro scene. I think he should see more play. Uh, that's my opinion. I'm not so sure about yours. Yeah, I agree. I, LGD actually just picked him up in one of their games against DK. So uh, definitely a hero which I think fits as a nice little support hero. It's not really, really first pick worthy, but I think it's a really strong counter to certain lineups and heroes like Storm Spirit, even Lifesteal to some extent, being able to silence off the Lifesteal can be really powerful. He's not going to do a whole lot against an Alchemist, but just being able to counter supports is a great thing to have in a hero like a Silencer. Yep, Shadow Demon won't be able to get disrupts off. No one can cast anything. It's it's quite scary as a, as a support when you get Global yeah. Silence. You, you really want to save your teammate, you want to throw out the disruption, but you get silence and of course, Storm Spirit, if he doesn't zip around, he's kind of food uh, to a lot of heroes here. Gyrocopter, DK will just take him down really easily. 
But Mithras, they do have two of the very, very, very hard carries that you don't want to be dealing with in the late game. So I would say Joe Elite do not want to drag this past the 40 minute mark. Or maybe even the 35, depending on how fast the Kels does get his items. Uh, and, oh, Mithras has good tower pushing as well with the Shrek. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think they need a Jolie need to do well early and try win the game early because late game Alchemist, is, as well as having Storm Spirit, is going to be really powerful. And then you have the, the Life Seal plus Storm Spirit combo. And Jolie's team, Joel team is really strongest around the sort of 20 to 30 minute mark. They have lots of mid game heroes like Darkseer, Dragon Knight. Uh, Dream Protector what doesn't do too well late game, so I think they want to do well early game and try and win the game fast. Yep. And uh, we have a little pause here, so let's take the time to go through the teams, uh, go through Joey Lee, you can take Myth, Trust, and yep, it's gonna be Kiosh on the Dragon Knight, it's Minerva on the Silencer, Domination on the Ducks here, Black Diamond, is that his real name? I'm not so sure. Joe Net, did they have roster changes? They're not really in the limelight, so I didn't really keep tabs on them, but he's gonna play the Triumph Protector, of course, bot passive, it's of course not bot passive, it's not a bot, it is Don Shuan, the solo mid player, he's gonna pick up, he's yet to pick up his hero, and it looks like he's not playing the Dragon Knight solo mid, so... He'll be... The last series, the Gyrocopter, so quite likely he'll be uh, on Gyrocopter. So a sort of carry... I guess it's an aggressive carry hero, it's not really a rice farming carry hero, but... For Myth Trust, we have got Arba playing the Storm Spirit, we've got R505 playing the Lashrak, Lakels, the big farmer on the Alchemist, SD playing Shadow Demon, and then TNK, he's going to be playing the Lifestealer. Yeah, one of the biggest trips when casting Mistrust is they love to drop Shadow Demon and put it on SD. So, <laughs> you call it... It makes <laughs> yeah. it easy. You, yeah. you call him SD and you're good. Yeah. In more ways than one. Oh, but sometimes they put him on the other player, so it gets really yeah. weird then. <laughs> they give uh, Yeah, if they give Shadow Demon to R5 or something, then it gets all kinds of confusing. But right SD now... actually used to play um, solo role. He used to play for Ideal Gigabyte and he played the solo role, but now that he's Moved to Mythras, he's been playing some amazing support for them. Yeah, the but what do you think it's gonna be is it gonna be Lakels or TNK on the off lane? Because both life dealer as well as Alchemist can go on a danger oh, lane or area. solo top lane, a solo safe lane on their own. Of course Stormstrip is going middle. Folks. And Shadow Demon Lashrak, although a very good combo, the Lashrak has to be very careful when timing that split of the spin. thousand of times. We've seen it a couple of times in pro games where the Lashrak just misses just by split seconds. Not as easy as Lina's. So, he has to be really good with that split off. Yeah, it, it looks like TNK is going to be in the off lane. They, it's Lakels. You have to give Lakels the easiest lane to farm it, and they're actually going to keep the supports with them. So, Show Demolish Track, at least at level 1, are going to be top. They'll probably look to gank a lot and gank early. They haven't got a smoke yet, but they can buy one pretty fast because it's only 100 gold. So, we'll maybe see them go for an early gank on mid. Uh, they won't really need to stay top because Darks is not even going top. Darks is going straight to the jungle. Yeah, and this is one of the things that I've um, well said to my viewers a couple of times. I really hate it in Southeast Asian Dota when they go, and it's what I call, like to call tri lane against nothing, where they they pick two off laners, and the off laners after a while they realize they can't really get anything out of the lane, so they just escape to the jungle, and we end up having tri lane against nothing. Pretty much just the supports jungling neutrals, and the other side is jungling neutrals. So you don't really see a lot of action, uh, save for the mid lane, or if they decide to go for an early smoke. So earliest you get a kill around four minutes. So. It, it gives a really boring start, if you could say it that way, and, well... It, it just looks kinda... like we're getting a tri lane versus nothing, at least, yeah. especially for, yeah. for Mythras. The Dark Seer is not even thinking about going top. And he's starting off, off at, in bottom lane. Well, no, he's, he's near the top lane, sorry. But he'll he'll see the supports and probably go jungle. Yeah, and it's such a waste to see Shadow Demon the Shrek for just having to neutral up for the early game. They are really strong early game, especially Especially with the burst damage and Alchemist as well, he can help out with that stun. So there's a lot of stun in the tri lane, all gonna be wasted just hitting creeps. So, and the bottom lane, whoa, Ooh, life is diving pretty far. He's gonna get caught. Yeah, he's gonna be get dead. <laughs> yeah. First blood. Yeah. yeah. First blood. And <laughs> maybe he should be jungling. <laughs> yep. I guess he does want to a fast TP back. No, he's going back all the way. He wasted the tango as well. Did he get caught in his? He was hiding in the trees. Yeah, I, I saw him earlier. He was hiding in the trees. Did he get caught? I'm not okay. so sure. I just saw, I, I switched the bottom lane and he was already in the lane behind the town. I'm like, wait, what are you doing there? That seems like a weird place to be. TNK, maybe he was trying to pull the creep wave and just got caught up by Treen. Because normally Treen actually goes for um, living armor at level 1, so if Treen has living armor, Silencer doesn't have any slow or disable. He should be okay and not be able to be killed off, but he did get killed off. So a little bit of overextension. I think he wanted to drag the creep wave. So. I want to mine oh, the yeah. top tower. Uh, but he does delay living armor by one level, I guess? 
3 and Protector is still 1 and a half, so if any ganks go on the map, which won't happen, but Chaos drops really low, so... No living armor for at least another 30 seconds, so he's buying teammates a little bit of time, I guess, if you call it that. But, now Black Diamond's got pulled through, and he's not careful, he might get picked off again. Yeah, he needs, he needs to be very careful here. TNK, we'll get a creep wave out of there. So Black Diamond, yeah, like you say, he's slowed down his level 2, which does help out the other lanes a little bit, but at the same time, DK... Already has his bottle up in mid lane, so he's gonna be doing just fine. This is a matchup you can play without the living armor. The living armor is just like, it's like that nice. Icing. It's like the I icing sugar on top. It's like, oh great, I was fine. I was happy without it, but with it there, even better. Yep. And well, Stormstreet is not going to do too bad either. He has the remnant for last hits as well as harassment, ten to five. And if he gets to level six and catch D here around here half HP, he could get a solo kill if he's lucky. But. Silencer's gonna pick up uh, Invis rune, and this could be dangerous for Abba, so DK, if he tries to bait Abba out, picks up a point in Dragon Tail, could actually get a kill here. And they don't have wards at the bottom as well, so it could be quite dangerous for the Storm Spirit. At the very yeah, least, he's gonna Darks, lose a lot of HP. If wanted, he could even come up with the gank, even just a level 2 Darks here, just adding a bit of damage could be really nice here. But Abba playing pretty safe in the mid lane, looks like Silencer is just head back bottom, so we're getting those... Both teams running with a tri lane against no one, and it results in the, the supports just looking to pull creep waves, get levels, get some farm, and we're seeing Treen do it at bottom, we're seeing the two supports, Shadow Demon Leshrac do it at top, but I feel Shadow Demon Leshrac, like you mentioned, one of the best support duos in the game, they need to be getting kills, they need to get a smoke, they need a gank, especially Dragon Knight mid, Dragon Knight's a very easy gank for them. Yep. He, he, he succumbs to magic damage very easily. He This misconception that he's a tank, he's not really a tank that early. Even though with the even with the Dragon Blood early on, he has a bonus 3 on top of the 4, so he has about 7, but magic damage goes right through that. And like any hero, he can be nuked down really easily, especially with Soul Catcher. And which is why we see R5, R5, he bought a smoke about 30 seconds ago, fly himself out. Flying the smoke off to himself right now. Probably gonna go for the 4 minute, hope for the top rune, or catch DK while he's going for the, for the rune. Either way, they might actually look for a kill here. Yeah, they're still hovering around this top lane, but yeah, I definitely think we will we'll see that smoke being used very, very soon. They want to kill off the DK. Um, they probably don't want to go... The problem is if you go up for a minute, maybe he, if the rune spawns bottom and DK goes bottom, you're wasting a lot of time uh, where he's smoked for... A, where he's where you've smoked to gank mid and DK's not even there because he's getting a rune, but DK's actually bottle crying, so it should be pretty safe to go mid pretty soon, but they're still sitting top. They've got level 1 Edict on the Shrak. Uh, there's some pushing power that Lestrak can offer, but they don't really seem to be looking to push this tower just yet. Yeah, SD no Soul Catcher, so... <laughs> uh, not so sure what he was thinking there. Probably wanted, wanted to jungle a little bit faster, but I think this is a mistake. Should go for 1-1-1 one, one, one at level 3. The Soul Catcher is really good, but they have stacked up a huge creep wave, so that could be the reason why he wants to push. Uh, no, he's pulling the creep wave? I'm pulling not so sure. Wave. He, he lets this half of it die poisons. to the tower. Yeah, it's like you say, the Shadow Poison's really nice for killing neutral stacks. It scales really well the more points you get. The stack damage goes up quite a lot, so... Um, getting Even just having level 2 Shadow Poison allows you to jungle a lot, but he's not even using it to jungle right now. He's just... Well, he looks like he's giving the farm mostly to the Kells on the Alchemist. Yeah, Domination actually poked his head up here, hoping to get some EXP at the tower. I think he got a little bit, but now he's going to spot that the two supports are out. He's going to be fearing a little bit, but once he realized they are, they're gone and the creeps aren't pulled, they, he might report it to Dragon Knight, and Dragon Knight will take a defensive stance at middle lane. But no, they look like... No, no, they're gonna wrap down middle. And, well, Kiosh has to be very careful when going for a last hit now. Abba, gonna be a little bit bold, and here comes SD. Yep, gonna get the disruption off, and this might be a dead DK. Instant TP support comes in. Kiosh gets stunned up by Lashrek, well placed. But here comes the living armor, and well, Abba is stunned up, and Kiosh pops the stick charges. A little bit of a mistake, he decided to dive there. He should have backed off when he got a chance. Abba hits level 6 with that, Minerva might take a fall as well. Double kill for R5, R5. Oh, he tries to jump to low ground, Soul Catcher as well. Domination will get a revenge kill here, so it's 2 for 2 now. The support's getting quite a bit of gold from that gank. And well, I think DK made a mistake there, trying to get the Storm Spirit kill. He, the last word wasn't high enough to silence him for that long. Yeah. He, as soon as the living armor came off, he thought he was maybe strong enough, but the Leshrac Diabol Edict actually completely obliterated the living armor. It was gone instantly. I guess the, I guess it's oh, like multiple yeah. ticks. Oh, nice. He yeah. turned around to run into that missile. Yeah, that, that was good play, or he would have died there. A great timing on the homing missile as well, so Chien deciding to engage earlier, bait out the rage. Hopefully the rage would have worn off before the missile hit, but yeah, walking into the missile, very clever of him and he will survive there but he is not getting anything he has got boots he has eight last hits now alchemist sitting at 38 and another thing i want to talk about of course 
You may be getting some advantage over the life stealer there, but what are you doing to stop the alchemist? Absolutely nothing. The darks here, well, not gonna do much now that alchemist has his ultimate and has a six minute Midas. No, well, not six minutes. He got it about half a half a minute ago, so that's even faster. And six minute Midas, and well, Lokels is gonna be very rich here. Are we gonna see a repeat <laughs> of the one, 1400 <laughs> GPM? It remains to be seen, but yeah. Look you know, fun, farming games aren't fun to watch, except when you're watching like one of the best farming games. Like normally you see like some carries rice farm, like an ant major alchemist. You're like, oh, this isn't fun to watch. But when they have 1400 GPM, it suddenly becomes really exciting. <laughs> it's like you want to see how big they can get that GPM. Yep. Uh, I believe before the calling bait bug was fixed, the PL held the highest records in the pro game. If I'm not wrong, someone's PL. I can't remember who whose it was. But yeah, he had a, had about a thousand GPM and that was really high for a PL at that time. But the calling bait uh, did make the illusions do extra damage to creeps, so it was it was banned in a later version. But before that it was exploited and uh, 1000 GPM was reached, yeah. Well, we'll see, if the kills wants to go for the super GPM, he'll go for something like a Battle Fury next. Event. But having both Midas and Battle Fury is so greedy, but right now he's not being pressured, so he, he may as well almost. And Apart from the Dragonite, they don't really have a lot of pushing power on Jonet. So if Mithras deals with it right with Poison Spam, well, they don't have a lot of anti push as well. There is there's Acid Spray and the Shadow Poison, but it will do if the Shrike decides to add Lightning, which he has at level 5, 1 point. If he adds more than that, he can actually counter push pretty well. And Life Stealer okay. can tank the creep as well. Bottom towers, get They've this. gone in for a game, they killed off Darkstar at top, and now DK is actually coming to the top lane. He's gonna kill off Lakels, so. Kills off as far as versing Mythras, the yes, most important play to kill and gank is gonna be the kill, so they've managed to do that at top lane. Yeah. Well, uh, well DK actually wants to look at and uh, no, he gets caught by the, the creep wave, so do something yeah. about that bottom tower. Bad timing. Yeah, that walk right into that creep wave, but meanwhile bottom lane, it looks like there is some aggression going on. They're gonna get a T1 tower here. Stormfrit's coming in for a gank, he's gonna double damage. Yeah, yeah Don't Shrun's dead. Definitely dead here. Yeah. Living Armor's not gonna save him because of the silent flies out, and they might be in more trouble, but no ever dropping lower mana. He drops it out, uh, he drops the spell and he takes the silent damage, so he's gonna back off there, nearly losing his life and losing the intel. But no, they gotta get they're gonna get Don Shuan for the tier 1 tower. An okay trade, I must say. Uh, Jonet gets a little bit of map control as well, but lose their hard carry, so not exactly the not exactly too good uh, too good for them, but he got the last hit on that. Yeah, Gyrocopter got the last hit, so he didn't really lose too much, I hope. Uh, Jonet were gonna get the tower regardless though, which is where it's not the best for them, is that because they they were gonna get they could have been more patient and they'd still get that tower, but they gave away an important kill for the tower, which is not what they really wanted and well Mithras, they're back to farming. Both teams have lost their carries in the last couple of minutes, but it's still fairly even slight edge to Mithras as far as farming goes, but nothing really as big as you'd normally expect to see from Locales. Okay, jumping on Locales now, Locales pops the uh, pops the stun here and then whoa the call down. Got a hit on him, he's gonna drop really low there, a little bit greedy on holding the stun there. Could have stunned a little bit earlier, now he's gonna die, lose an unsuit intelligence, see the stun. A vacuum goes in on TNK, TNK, gonna be backing off. And now Soul Catcher as well, the disruption goes out, no follow up, the strike that well, he's already used and now the search gonna give him out of his fight. And another thing not uh, we haven't talked about, of course, Shadow Demon, once he hits level 6, Darkseer's gonna find it a little bit difficult to surge out, or surge out anyone for that matter if they get pushed. Search is removed and, well, they'll be, they're brought down very quickly. But right now, 4-4, four four, and they lose to Kells once again, so I'm not so sure he should be participating in the fights with just a Midas ring as well as the boots. He's looking to be actually, well, really, really squishy even with his ultimate, because Radiant he does have a low armor point. Yeah, and the ring makes me think he does want to go for that battle for you. If you're trying to farm battle for you, you just got to keep on farming. There's no point coming to fights as an alchemist when you've gone for a max Grievous Creed and you're rushing a Midas Battle Fury. That's not a good fighting build, so he should just be staying top lane, keep continuing to farm. He shouldn't be looking to come get involved. Yep, he has already died twice, so hopefully he stops dying so he can get that 1400. And well, right now he's sitting at 60.8, so I wouldn't really criticize him too much. He's going for the tower push up top. But Radiant middle lane, top they have a lot of heroes shape. waiting there. Trying to pick off and well, it's a little bit of standoff here. Jonet have a couple of heroes as well. Silencer, just one more level from his GS, and that's going to be a huge one. If Storm Spirit jumps in at the wrong time, gets hit by the GS, he's going to die. Yeah, it really feels like they want to get Minerva that level 6 on the Silencer. Not quite able to do it. Dream Protector also getting close to his level 6, although his level 6 not quite Radiant as important as the Silencer. All in all, Jonah are doing okay here. They actually sent Jared Copter to the top lane now to verse the, the Alchemist, just to try and slow down his farm as much as possible. 
Yeah, and Jonah and I have a rather defensive lineup, if you call it that, before the Dragonite gets fed, before the Dark Seer gets its levels up. They are a rather defensive silencer as well as the Trian Protector. Like you said, Trian is not exactly the best ganker. He can heal up Tiles, his Leech Seed does do a little bit, but before he gets his overgrowth, silencer really doesn't have an inbuilt slow. He has a lot of nuke with his glaives as well as the last word doing pure damage as well as a mix of magical it's good but here comes the disruption here on donshron donshron's gonna drop once again so a little bit over yeah he always standard quite far there so yeah they just didn't really keep track of the mistrust heroes there he's, he's sort of thinking that he's in a 1v1 matchup against alchemist but all the heroes rotated yep. in storm just going to sip in look for the darks here now as well i think darks here is well dead here and he get kept alive by the living armor but not for long let's drag lightning storm finishes off the kill and the Kells dies once again. They just keep on killing the Kells. Now the Global Silence comes into play here. Arbat can't actually fly out of this one. He can soon. He just gets away to his tower. As Mithras can be pushed back here. It seems like an okay trade for for Jonet. They kill off the Kells for the third time in like in like five minutes or something. Yep. He has really not been having a good time. I mean, yeah, he got a few kills as well, but it's not exactly the best to be dying there, especially. Alchemist can bounce back still, we won't count him, out, count him out, you can let Alchemist die 7 times and he still will No, he didn't get any kills, 0-3 and 3 now So, Radiant I bet the chat will be calling him a feeder now, apart. asking for reports <laughs> and whatnot But still, Alchemist, there is a reason why Alchemist is, well, allowed to at least go on the Radiant suicide lane sometimes Because, despite going there, he gets the Grievous Greed, a little bit of free time and he will bounce back up Before you know it, you look away, you come back Battle Fury Assault Kuras and you don't even know what happened, you thought, uh, and then you go complain to your friends. Hey, I thought I shut him down early, you said gank him and I'll be fine, but I wasn't fine. So, Alchemist, you have to be on him, destroy his towers, non-stop, or you're gonna, you're gonna gonna face a fat Alchemist sooner or later. Yeah, even with the three deaths, his net worth is still 5.2k, and the highest on the Radiant team is 3.3k with the Gyrocopter, so he's still the highest farmer by a good margin, even with dying Trouble three times in the end. So, uh, I don't think Mithras... They'll, they'll probably look and say, okay, he just died three times. He could have his Battle Fury now if he hadn't died, but he's still farming great. He's, he's not farming poorly by any means. Yep. But Don Juan has been dying a fair bit himself, so I, I wouldn't say he's the best trade for Don Jonet. Yes, they pick off Lakels, but attack. well, they lose a hard carry a couple of times. He only has the Helm of the Dominator right now. Not so sure why Gyrocopters actually choose to pick it, pick it up so early. I mean, it does give nice damage. It does give the life steal, but... I think that Gyrocopter can benefit a lot more, especially with so much magical damage around, he could benefit from a BKB. And I think maybe he was trying to do a lot of ancient stacking with it, but he hasn't actually done that at all. He hasn't oh, so he's really he's gonna draw for the Dragon Tail and Ever gonna get caught out here as well, but no, no global silence, so Dumb Thread sits away just in time, dodges the call down, Overgrowth gonna whiff completely, catches a bunch of tree, a bunch of creep. Homing Missile gonna chase down the, the Shrek, he has a lot of gold on him, so he can't really die. And they're gonna surge out Dragonite again, this is a really good combo. Dragonite and he's gonna get the tail, oh Ever, unable to phase away in time. And he's gonna get caught. R5, R5, missing on the stun there. Oh, good pickup here from the DK. It's a good combo, like I said, surging the Dragon Knight, and it's really hard to run away from a stun. And I believe he has been combat many times before, and it is a really long duration for a single target stun. Yeah, once, when you, whenever you have your ultimate up as a Dragon Knight, that stun suddenly becomes a very spammable raw. It's a very short cooldown, 9 second cooldown on a 2.5 second stun. And with the surge there, it's so easy to get in position. It's on the it's a decent range with the, the range form, but it's not fantastic. Yeah, but with a surge, that 400 range Radiant's becomes, it feels like 700 or 800 range. Yeah, you're just gonna run for the big bad dragon, and now Lakel's gonna farm himself up some creeps, some creeps that were left over from the start of the game. Uh, surprised he may earlier on not get some acid breaker have helped his jungling quite a bit, and help his, well, help supports as well. Going for the stun in a rather passive try lane, well, a bit questionable, I think. One, one point is enough, he went for two. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, very, it's one of those things which often comes down to personal preference. They didn't really have any heroes top to be killing with the stun. He then came to the fights later on though and tried to use it, but couldn't really do so. Attack. But uh, we'll see actually the action coming towards the top lane though, because Joe, Joe Elite, they want to try and push this top tier one tower. And right now, Mithras not really in a position to defend it. Yeah, but Dubby Nation has a mech already, so... Is under he might be an offlane Darks here, but he has been getting the farm. 15 minutes mech is quite a big deal. And that'll help a lot in the team fights, especially since Mithras, they, yeah, they do have a lot of burst damage. Well, they don't really have a lot of burst damage. So, it's gonna help quite a lot for the entire team. And they take a tier Dyer's 1 for free. Top tower has fallen. Oh, okay. That's And they're gonna defend their tier 1 mid tower. Mithras will try and do some damage to that, but Radiant's hardly do anything at all. DK's TP'd in now. He's gonna force back Mithras, so... 
with trusts, not doing a, well, are just unable to defend their towers in general. And no. They were ahead early on in terms of farm, but no longer. Uh, there gonna be a GS. They might actually throw GS for this. No, he didn't. Not. He should have dropped the GS. They would have gotten a kill in the storm spirit, I think. But well. it's it's hard because they don't have any slow or stun. The, the homing missile is not really gonna be. Able, he can just outrun the homing missile and wait for the sun to wear off. It was dra if it was Dragon Knight TP, they could have killed him. But because it was the gyrocopter, they couldn't really kill the storm spirit. Uh, well, I guess so. But oh, Don Shuan, he is a little bit behind. He might want to lay off on aggression right now. Now he's taking the front lines once again. So. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you say that, he does the exact opposite. He's probably going to die five seconds later because he's being very aggressive. He's got his whole team though, so they've got the mech now, which will actually really help to keep him alive in these fights. And Duxi has four points in vacuum, skipping the wall um, till at level 10. So, well, normally you want to get level 10 so you can get the second level 11. So, well, like you said, it could be personal preference. It is Radiant's a pretty safe build for four, four, three. Attack. Usually you could get away with three, four, two. Or 4 3 4 3 2. I mean, not maxing iron shell sometimes, Radiance I guess, is okay at some points in the game. But not getting a point of wall, quite questionable. It does limit their team fight quite a bit. Yeah, and some dark series, I, I've seen a few players even get the, the ultimate, like level 6 or level 7. They'll get it really early just Radiance because it's a nice bit of extra damage attack. if you're trying to go, if you're trying to team fight. But right now, neither team wants to really team fight. Both teams are trying to get their carries farmed up. Jonah have a pretty defensive lineup in Mithras. They've got a super farm base lineup with an alchemist on their team who now has a completed battle fury yep and next bomb is armed and ready to go and storm spirit has half his orchid waiting for him and yeah he's gonna look to farm that up maybe look for a pick off here on gyrocopter once again don shuan doesn't have any escape mechanism they do have domination in the back lines they're waiting to land him some aid but if the storm spirit does get a jump on him with the life steal i imagine he could go down really quickly yeah, there's a lot of heroes at top lane though, so I think Storm's being as careful as possible. He'll n and there's no tower, there's the T1 tower's tower being taken down, so there's no one who can really TP in easily. So, so I'm just going to go back to farming the top lane. And uh, for the most part, Joe Elite, well, they haven't found kills, but they're, they're finding towers, they're finding some decent farm for most of their key heroes here. Yeah, not so sure what Trium Protector is saying. Oh, goes for the lead sheet, slows down R5, R5. He has a very, very big uh, kill lead here. A little bit of a misstack on the. Disables there, but yeah, they want to get that kill as a dominating streak for this train protector. Not the best to go onto him, but still, it will work towards his blink dagger fund. If, he's, if you look, he's sitting at 1.7k. Once he gets that blink dagger, it's a very easy initiation for him. And train protector, he can make use of that blink really well. Overgrowth, he just used it. 50 seconds left on that cooldown. So, and this is good for jo for Jonah because their lineup is going to shine Dyer's in the mid. You, you mentioned they have a defensive attack. lineup, it's very defensive, Radiant's but once they get their levels and farm attack. around the 20 to 25 minute mark, they're going to be really strong because they've already got the mech on the darks here. Darks are, I believe, building towards a pipe. They're going to have a blink dagger on the tree and protector. They have gyrocopter who's starting to build a BKB. They're going to be really, really scary and strong for the next sort of 10 minutes of the game. And that's because can't come fight. Alchemist can't really do a whole lot until he has a BKB. Yep. And uh, even with the, with the BKB, he still lacks armor, so he's hit the wall illusions as well as DK gyrocopter bashing away at him. And even Tram yeah. Protector with those really big fists will do quite a bit of damage. And Stone Straight now he wants to zip in on domination, go to get the pull up, but there's a mech. I don't think they can get this kill. And it's gonna go surge up immediately as well as a mech. And they'll try and slow him down, but no, he's not gonna get it. And oh, Kiosh, he's gonna back in the life steal. Nice timing there on the Dragon Tail. TNK dropping down to half health. Last one flies out as well. Is that gonna be a global? Nice disruption. Gonna be saving his life there. But his last one's gonna hit. Last one's gonna pop. Gyrocopter will take a kill there. So 9 to 6 down in favor. And Myth Trust not looking to be the best form. Jonet biting back. You said they're defensive. Well, they are a turtle that bites back. And I see Tom Strip pulling in someone. Once again, Kiosh a little bit too tanky with the bonus armor. And now he has 20 armor. He has no mana left though. He has bottled up a little bit. I hear a disruption go out here. Onto the Black Diamond as well. Domination, domination drops really low. But R5, R5, he gets hit by the last word. And now he's going to be chased down by the Glaives as well as the Iron Shell. And he will take a fall there. Don Shuan will pick that up. Killing spree for him. And I see a disruption draw. You know, disruption goes on. Shadow Demon dodging the missile there. But he might cost him his life. Gyrocopter is going to throw out the Shadow Poison. He even has time for that. Now Dragon Snack, he's going to give chase. And if Don Shuan doesn't block him there, nope. The Rocket Rush is going to remove him. Nope. Very good timing on that thing, Breath as well. Onage from the Gunnett. 11 to 6 right now. Myth Trust. <laughs> a little bit of messy plays, I think. Yeah, just three kill after kill. Myth Trust. Just. You their lineup with the Storm Spirit, and you've got a Life Zone Fest looks kind of mobile, but Jonah are just faster and keeping up with them. They've got just a very fast gyrocopter. Darks are able to surge everyone on their team, and they're keeping up. They're just catching these heroes and punishing Mythtrust for making a few small mistakes. Yeah, I think Storm Spirit has been 
ganking a little bit too much. But often when you play Storm, well, at least I, I tend to forget to farm as well because I get very excited with ganking. I get four kills, five kills on the side lanes. But then I realize I still don't have my orchid because Storm Spirit is a carry. So after a while, you still have to go back to the creep. You still have to get some more, some amount of farm. And I think Abba has not been balancing that farming aspect a little bit. And well, he's been getting, he's been, he's been in the fights, but he's got killed twice and only got one kill in return. So his orchid's really, really delayed. If you see someone like Dandy, I'm not so sure. Some other Storm Spirit players as well, they do get their Orchid really early because they do take the time to farm. Yeah, you need that first item for Storm Spirit. Usually you go for the Orchid. Some players like the Bloodstone first, but whatever it is, you have to you have to devote time to farming. You can't be ganking 24-7. But right now, Arba, he's going to have the, the Orchid soon-ish, but it just feels like he needs it even earlier because right now, Jonah are the ones ganking and Storm can't really come to the fight Radiant until he has the Orchid to finish. Mistrust going to try to get this top tier one tower, Radiant finally. If they can get this, that will give them a good chunk of gold to help out both... Well, to help out everyone. Storm Spirit needs an item. Life Stealer needs some damage. Alchemist needs to get his BKB or possibly something like a Shadow Blade. Oh, this will be really. Oh, he's on gang. Could be bad. It will BKB instantly from Lakel. Popped out as well, but go. Nice global silence. Go through the BKB. Now he's gonna start himself. Yep, he's gonna start himself, but unfortunately with the BKB, they will not be getting that. But Darkseer gets a free kill, and Lakel's gonna try to TP out there. A little bit slow, but no, he'll still get out of there. But now TNK, he tries to chase down the silence. So Santa throws out the blast as well, but TNK pops the rage and goes into the TP. So all of them gonna get out. Only Storm Spirit dying once again. So that's gonna delay his orchid even longer. He did blow. A lot of ultimates on Jonet's side, but still they're gonna take that trade. Storm Spirit, if he gets delayed a little bit too much, he tends to become useless even after getting that orchid. He becomes well he falls out of favor with DK getting a little bit too strong to kick off. Snowball heroes like Storm Spirit, they need the enemy heroes to be pushy as well as low level, under level. Because that's why you solo mid for, you want to get that level advantage. Pick off the side lanes, destroy them, but once they get high levels, they get items like Mech and Trend Protector. Already has his Blink Dagger, he might have built towards the drums maybe, uh, more tanky items then. Oh, Trend Protector isn't easy to bring down in the first place. Silencer is your only bet, but he has an Urner Shadows, and he has Living Armor as well as Mech on his side. So I'm not so sure what Storm Spirit actually wants to do in this case. Yeah, and that death in the last fight slowed down his Orchid even more now. So he'll have it, but it'll be like a 24-25 minute Orchid. And the BKB and Alchemist really saved Mithrust from taking a lot more damage in that last fight as well. Uh, they just managed to get a couple TPs out there from both BKB Alchemist and the Lifesteal and the Rage form. But if they didn't have those, it could have gone a whole Radiant's lot worse. Jonet, they attack. used all those ultimates, only got one kill, but it looked like they could have easily gotten three or four kills. Yeah, but still, Lakel's popping his 10 second BKB charge defensively not exactly the thing you want. And he didn't get to throw his stun off. Silencer having the discipline to just keep that global silence when he saw Alchemist pop the bottle. And yeah, so Lakel's, if he does that without the BKB, he's gonna stun himself and that could be devastating, especially with his lack of armor. He's going for the assault now, but he's sitting at 4 armor. That unstable concussion is gonna do about 300 damage to him. And that's not something he can afford in a team fight. Wow. Myth Trust now, Alchemist. A, a lot of gold. Actually, yeah, he's picked up a Hyperstone, so this means Assault Crest is on the way for Lakel. So that'll be his next time. We're not seeing the Shadow Blade build from him, but it doesn't really feel like they need the initiation from a Shadow Blade Alchemist because they have got Storm Spirit who can zip in and the Life Stealer who can invest in the Storm Spirit. So they've already got two great initiators. Shadow Demon Disruption can even be used as initiation, so it feels like Alchemist is just the follow up damage. Yeah, and Life Stealer hasn't been having the best of time. He has a drum, he has a tread, <laughs> only a glove, so. Not even close to his armlet right now. I guess, yeah, the gloves is probably just the start of his armlet, but he's he's still tanky enough and just has the magic unit that if he goes in with an infest in the Storm Spirit, he can just pop the rage and be like a distraction because Alchemist will do a lot of damage. And the Assault Curse and Alchemist will meet uh, Life Steal to do a bit more damage because of the minus armor, but even so, he's going to have to be very careful. I'm going to back in, uh, back in Shadow to the death, but he's going to do too much. Oh, Shepard Tiger diving very far in. Drops the overgrowth as well as the leaf seed onto them, but SD might take down from the curse. Yeah, he's gonna take down from the curse. Minus two himself for you. Rain, drain, and dummy nation. Well, he wanted to give chase, but he saw that the, the Shadow Demon was dying. Let's strike a little bit too high on HP right now. And they're gonna take another tier two for themselves. Meanwhile, Alchemist as well as the life stealer does get a tier two for themselves. Whoa, global science flies out. Ammo gets stunned up as well as Dragon Tail. Well, gonna troll right clicks onto him, he's gonna dodge away, back him a little bit late to the party. And well, Storm Spirit will be getting out of their life. TNK might be risking his life here, no, pops the rage. We'll have time to TP out of that, so great usage of that. Great, yep, gotta get out of there. So, great usage there. TNK being very, very 
hitting Demon Tower. Lagal speed well, bumps the BKB. Charge down Don Juan. No, turns around, hit a creep. Might be a little bit of a lag spike there. No, turns around, far up in some way. So, gold is more important. Not gonna leave the, uh, gonna leave the Gyrocopter alone. Of course, Gyrocopter with the phase. No drums. Pretty slow at Minerva. Oh, Minerva. <laughs> he cancels TP, I think. Yeah, he cancels oh, wow. TP. The strike's gonna bump into him, and that's a dead silencer. And Kills silent as well, but yeah, Minerva's out of mana. Yeah, he's gonna resign to fate here, not gonna pop stick charges. Oh, he's, he's almost winning this fight, he's gonna magic stick, but he's not gonna pop it. Pop all last word, he could've almost got that kill. <laughs> that was pretty comical right there. <laughs> Starting himself and then the lead destruction. <laughs> it's like Cirque, Cirque de Soleil almost, but... Well, we'll see a Roshan attempt, it looks like. Mithras at least a pinging Roshan. Alchemist can easily tank this up, and the minus armor as well coming in. Yeah, Roshan yeah. with minus 8 armor, and looks like Jonet can't really stop this because they haven't got silencer up Aww. and without global silence this gets a lot more tricky. Yep. Like we said earlier, Joe Nat, they had the advantage, they were the sort of like biting turtle, if you like call that, the turtle that bites back. They are turtle, they turtle really well, got a few counter ganks off, uh, Mithras were a little bit sloppy in the engagement, but still, in the end, Mithras is uh, Alchemist already farming really, really fast. And this is the best of one, guys, Joe Nat versus Mithras in your GSD June event. So the winner, or the loser will not be knocked out just yet. Uh, they'll be going on to play someone else, but Domination, he's gonna get back in on Lokel. Lokel forced to pop the BKB defensively, pops his stun as well. He's gonna run into the missile, but you know, go and throw the stun out on Domination. Domination walks into the Asterisk, take that up, and Jan even throws out the Soul Catcher. Unfortunate there, but here comes Snake Bomb, but Belt passive or Don Schwan gonna pop the BKB, and he really picks up Shadow Demon as well. Storm Sprint, Storm Sprint dying once again. TNK not having a good time either, gonna lose himself, and Black Diamond. Dominating streak, Lakel's gonna stun himself. The stun gonna throw out DK that's gonna buy him a little bit of time. Good bit of follow up, but R5, R5 can do nothing but run. Lee sees to follow up. Who says Strand can't chase, and well, <laughs> looks like Lakel will take a fall as well. And no, Lakel might be going down as uh, well. 5.5 and a missile to follow up. He might stun himself, no, but he will stun that time around him. He loses his Aegis, and he will most likely die again. Without his ultimate, he's, well, he's chances of getting out this time. <laughs> he's dead, it's a team wipe. What a fight from Jonet! That was so good. And sure, without they were heading science. kills. Yeah, without global science, they they were heading kills and already were, but they were behind. They were behind by about seven point five. They were behind by like eight k gold there, and they still team wipe Myth Trust. The big deciding factor there was the tree and ultimate. Tree and blinked in with an ultimate at the perfect time. Caught out most. Caught out the entire Myth Trust team by surprise practically, and Jonet just cleaned them up during that tree ult. Yep, and well. I guess this is one of the times where you, Trien is at his best. He doesn't go for the living armor save so much. There wasn't really a lot of that in this game, but rather he had a lot of good games where he didn't die in the engagements. He nearly died up top, uh, bottom lane. He nearly died, but he didn't, and he survived. And as long as you survive as a support and well, get even even trades in fights, you can get something good. And oh, Abba got it caught out again, and they pop a lot of ultimates just to kill that Storm Spirit. <laughs> Storm Spirit, 50 yeah. seconds on the sidelines. He's trying to rush a BKB, but. What good is he gonna do him if he uh, keeps dying? He'll be dropping behind on levels and he won't be able to solo kill anyone, much less actually just do anything. He can silence someone, pull someone else, and well, hope he doesn't get caught out. Because he can die within the duration of a tail, dragon tail. And Gyrocopter looking to be bigger and bigger now, 2.8k on him. Might look for bigger items, silencer calls for pause. Yep. Yeah, the, the best, the, the good news for Jonah is that this Shadow Blade on the Dragon Knight now gives them a great initiation of their own because until they had the Shadow Blade, they weren't really. They had the Blink Dagger on Trian and he could Blink Ulti, but they need to also save his ultimate to deal with Alchemist and to deal with Life Source. So they don't want to use it to start off a fight, they want to use the Dragon Knight to start the fight. He can Shadow Blade in and get a stun off, which is how they just killed the Storm. That wasn't a team fight, but they can also use this to get pick offs. They kill the Storm through it, they have to use a Silencer ultimate, but it's well worth it because. Storm Spirit for Mythcrust is a very key hero for them, and all these BKBs, well, the BKB on Alchemist, uh, the, the Rage and the Life Stealer can be countered by a Trine Ultimate, which is partly where this hero comes into play as a really strong counter to the Mythcrust lineup. Yeah, and we, we talk about the Wombo combos, and Jonet has been executing that perfectly. The cooldowns, well, just evaporate the supports, and I, I would class Storm Spirit as a support right now. He's as good as a support. He dies immediately in the team fights. Even Lestrade outlasts him. In that last fight there, so Storm Spirit not been having not been having the best game of his life, and still waiting. Not so sure what's happening. There are no details. Um, oh, this is C Dota, guys. Lots of delay <laughs> every day. 
PC, PC problems, people being late, people needing to use the, the wash closet, all kinds of stuff. It happens, but Don Juan, he's he's doing well in the gyrocopter. His name is Bot Passive, but he's been involved in 11 of these kills, so he has not played particularly passive. Yep, and well, Lakel looks to be in a little bit of trouble here. Kiosh, undercover shadow blade, and they say go. Well, Lakel is gonna assume that. Yep, back to farming, but no, sir. It's gonna be DK running up there, and we already see the Darkseer surging out, and he could be in a big load of trouble. And here comes the Wag as well, Strand Tail, and there will be no overgrowth for this one. But Lee Seed follows him as well, and again, forced to use the BKB defensively. So, he's gonna yeah, drop they down. They have the overgrowth seconds. up, they can oh. cancel. With Overgrowth, they can cancel the TP, but it was on cooldown, unfortunately. But they forced a BKB out of him, and very soon you'll be stuck at a 4 second BKB charge. Of course, BKB was nerfed again in the last patch, so it's gonna be even worse and worse on Alchemist. Although, of course, he will have the money to rebuy another one, but still, it's not something you really want when fighting here. Even a 6 second BKB or 5 second one can be detrimental in the next fight. He wasted 4, I, I would say all 4 of his BKBs were forced to be defensive, and then he just decided to go aggressive with the remaining time on that. So, look else, not the best use of BKB in this game. A lot of TP stores bottom lane. Looks like they, uh, Jonet really want to defend this. Stormstreet's going to try to zip in here, but he's zipped into maybe a bad position. DK, is there a stun on Arba? No, he's not going to get it off. I think he actually stunned an illusion there instead. Arba's still on the run now. He's running out of money. Still got a couple hundred left, so has a blink. he should be okay. And he's going to trap the entire team disruption on the Lashrak to save his life, but SD, he'll be the sacrificial lamb here. Lashrak, no, he still wants to fight. He has a pipe. Darks here, no, 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 that was Darks here. Uh, Mithras will be losing the Shadow Demon here, but he did buy himself some time. Uh, While well, Storm Spirit tries to dodge the rocket, but he gets hit in the end. So Shadow Demon being, well, really noble there. I thought it was a strike for a moment there. But... DK stunned a creep, on, well, stunned an illusion, unfortunately. Storm Spirit was dead. They should have killed the Storm there, but he accidentally selected the illusion. Yep. And uh, well, but the thing, the thing is, Mithras, both of the supports have four staffs, so. They have been getting some level of farm in this game. Yeah, it's the, the supports are, are doing pretty nicely. Um, it, it really helped out there because Lestrak, he managed to survive despite being put in a really bad position because of all this mobility. Uh, Lestrak might not want to get too close, a uh, vacuum into a Dragon's Tail could end his life very easily. And Abba, it looks like he wants to jump in. He There's a Soul Catcher on Kiyosh right now, they could decide to go in and here comes Alchemist. He wants something, but nope, the Global Sun's gonna hit him, and this time, he doesn't have enough for the BKB, and he's gonna stun himself, no, he gets it off just in time, but get overgrowth there, and his BKB is gonna be completely wasted, here comes the wall as well, but, but well, Bob has him, Don Tron, he's gonna take a fall, BKB wasted as well, life to the end that streak, and there's a lot of heroes going down right now, he's losing a lot of HP domination, he tries to get someone by evil, disrupted, and Trap Nexter finally gonna die, and Storm Spirit doing work, Life Stealer as well, but the Kel's he's gonna get his stun off finally, and now, it's their turn to get a team wide bit trust, Wipes the state clean, it's 2 1 to 12 right now. And they get a free gem as well. Yeah, That's free gem on the ground. And there was, that to me was mostly just the, the great support play from Mithras. Shadow Demon Disruption saved the Alchemist, and then they four staff him away from the DK who was trying to kill him off. Lakel's got down to about a couple hundred HP, but got saved by some great support play, and yeah, it was just a really Industry good fight that Mithras needed there. Tower, now they might actually decide to uh, do some damage to the Radiant tree with structures are the fortified. DK as well as the gyrocopter on the sidelines for about 20 seconds for the DK. The gyrocopter is respawning, Radiant's but middle tower they will need the entire fallen. team to fight this. Lakels is really farm. He has his abyssal blade now if he wants it. Yikes, uh, this is Lakels who is 0 and 4. He's got 8 assists, but he's been ganked quite a bit. At least <laughs> more than he four. normally gets ganked. Yeah, <laughs> he's not forgetting anything this entire game. And he's almost maxed out. He's, I mean, you can replace his TP scroll with an item, but apart from that, he's maxed out. He probably wants a new BKB as well, because his BKB is down to 5 seconds, and one more use will be 4 seconds. Oh, here comes Donshuan. Donshuan very aggressive and a good overgrowth. But again, the BKB is going to pop here. Donshuan loses a lot of HP there, loses his life. Trevor Tactor a little bit overzealous, I think. No wall, no vacuum, no global silence. I'm not so sure what they were doing there. Jonet might have just thrown the game there. And well, Minerva is going to take a better retreat. Mid trust, they were looking to just farm up some ancients and just back off there. But now it's like, oh, looks like Gyrocopter's Trend Protector has thrown the game. So now we're going to march into the tier <laughs> 3. And I don't think Jonet can stop this. They have Global, they have Wall. They could try, but I don't think this it's looks good for them. It's tricky. It's tricky. And the, the good thing about having a short BKB that everyone always forgets is that it's got a short cooldown. The 4 second BKB has the shorter cooldown. It's a 50 second. 50 second cooldown instead of the 80 second cooldown.
cooldown when you have a 10 second BKB. So it actually, there is some benefits to using your BKB lot. Sure, it doesn't last as long, but having a much shorter cooldown meant his BKB was back up for that fight at the entrance there. He got those two kills because he had his BKB up, and if that was a 10 second BKB, he would still be on cooldown. Yeah, this, these, these are one of the few times where, oh, a uh, negative effect can have to go and well, the BKB will actually save him as long as we're getting caught out on top but the BKB actually does save him quite a bit because he just needs a little bit of time to make sure Silence doesn't cast Last Word or Global Silence onto him and he just he pretty much just needs the BKB to pop out Global Silence I think Dragon Tail, yeah, yeah, it hurts quite a bit Call Down really doesn't scratch him anymore and well, Overgrowth he can be disrupted out of that one and oh, Trian He's a little bit away from the trees there. Global Silence forced to pop, but BKB once again got his spell that silence. And well, Trian Protector wastes his ultimate. So the silence. And well, DK actually TP'd in, but there's more trolls coming the way of Jonet. And well, they look really strong in the early game, but right now, I think they're tossing a lot of bones into, well, Mistrust. <laughs> trust. Oh, yeah. And, and like you say, a bit of throws here and there. DK and. DK and Trim Protector tried to mount a two man defense of a tower against Radiant's four heroes. That was, that was never going to work. Yep, and now with the Bastrak, with the Diabolic Edict, they'll take down the tier 2 very quickly and Lakel's looking really good. Not going for the, no, Radiant's Aegis, and now two more minutes on that one. Falling. He did blow it in the last fight, but I don't think they need the Aegis right now. Even if D DK and Tramp are up, I don't Radiant's think they can get a kill. And now Lakel's gonna go very aggressive. And well, surge up here on Minerva. Minerva not gonna get out of there alive. He gets bashed on the first hit. And Domination gonna get bashed again by the Lifesteal as well as Ultimate. And they just kill him. Double kill, TNK. But Gyrocopter, he's gonna 1v5 right now. He's watch him do it. BKB off, and here comes the stop. Zips right in, silences him up. Living armor is not gonna do any good. Triple kill. Yeah, okay. Look didn't really have a lot of didn't have a lot of fun in this game. Getting picked off left right and center. At the end of the game, 300 uh, 300 CS. Look at the GPM. 850, not his best, but still he has been getting still a very important. impressive. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. He always finds a ton of farm, and especially on Alchemist. You give him Alchemist, Mythcross win the game. Even when he has, this is him having a bad game. He has 850 GPM on a bad game. Radiance middle tower. And him having a good game. Okay. Looks like, oh, looks like Jonet still wants to go for it, and now they're getting at the six uh, fall there. And Kiosh, uh, no, no BKB on him, so he will uh, he will die as well. The stun on Alchemist is lasting a really long time. The kill. Just gonna be rampaging through this entire raided base. He's gonna chop down the racks here, ignoring all tower hits. Man. Well, at, when Alchemist gets this kind of items, even heroes like Anti Mage don't bring it down. Yeah, <laughs> this is I don't I don't know who actually can, what kind of hero you'd want against this kind of Alchemist. Maybe a Faceless Void. Yeah, Faceless Void. You need something with Bash and, and a lot of lockdown, which is something like a Faceless Void. <laughs> Double this Alchemist is unbeatable. Yeah, Double Abyssal Blade brings it down, and DK he tries. But I don't think he's gonna get anything. Look out, he's gonna run away just to keep his kill score a little bit cleaner. Oh, he might die. Yep, he dies. Because the silent, a little bit too tough for him, man. Oh, Minerva, gonna go right click down TNK. But TNK at this point, he's fat as well. That's the point of having an alchemist. The alchemist, he's kind of like a carry hero that comes, he's a late game carry that comes online in the mid game. It's a late game, uh, he's a late game that comes online in the mid game, which is one of his strengths. He comes online really quickly. But, Given farm someone like a PA or maybe a places boy could actually beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but still, you buy time for your life stealer to come. Online. That's that's the, that's the point of picking up two calls. Uh, Lacels he can get a lot of farm. Life stealer can survive really well. And although he might have got a really bad start, but with Alchemist rampaging through, being the bait if you call it life stealer, he gets a lot of pickoffs in the game. And well, once he does survive a few fights, he gets really fat as well. And a fat life stealer, yeah, you might be able to deal with a but fat life stealer and Alchemist is something that a lot of teams will find is a big pain to deal with. And well, Jonet, they're just bleeding dry now. Yeah, Jonet have very little left. With four axes down, it's, it's pretty much GG at this point. I'll take something very miraculous to defend. And it's it's like you say, Alchemist just gave space to the rest of the team. Storm Spirit had a really bad start. He's still only five and six, but he's managed to pick up items now. He's got his BKB, he's staying to the end. So I think for the most part that Mythcrust are just even though they're, they're behind on kills, they've been behind on kills the entire game, they've been always getting farm. They're, they're leading the, the net worth as the top three heroes on their side as far as net worth goes. Um, at no point were they under farm, which basically meant that even though they're getting killed, they're still out farming Jonah. Roshan, has fallen yep. to the Roshan will go down, and well, Akel's gonna say, it's like, too cool for me, I've gotta get my butterfly. And Abba is gonna pick up the Aegis, so hopefully he will die less. He's five and six this game. Not He's managed to catch up in terms of kills, but 
not again not a good game for him. This is well, I could call it a tactic if you have one guy that well. He makes a name for himself, if you call it that. He makes a name for himself, he becomes a team where you, your team will be a null chance like Oh, kill Alchemist first, kill Alchemist first! And well, in the fights, you aim for Alchemist. And even if you do bring him down, the entire team will wrap around you and just destroy you. So, when Alchemist gets to that stage, he kind of gets that... Oh, he kind of gets that mention because... Oh yeah, Lakels is on Alchemist, he's gonna farm really fast. So we have to take him down. So when they all focus on him, Storm Spirit gets a little space, Life Stealer gets space. And that is when they start to farm up. It's the same... The same concept with all the mid snowballers like TA, or in some cases in top game Zeus, Bloodseeker. He must make the name for himself, but nope, here comes the sponsor it. Good slip in right there. Immediately picked up Sansa, no GS for this fight. And Kiosh just gonna be beaten down. Nice the strike Sam gonna start the Dark Kills also. DK, no more fight here. Left in Jonet. The entire team has been wiped. Double abyssal bait on Gyrocopter just because. And well, they're gonna call GG 27-25. And they're trust they're gonna breeze through this game. I would say breeze through this game, but they're gonna breeze through the late game. They're pretty, really, really farm carries. And well, <laughs> Jonet, yeah. they had a they had an opening at some point, but a couple of trolls here and there, miscommunications, and well, the game just goes down. Well, so Kel, yeah, carry when, they, when they got that team wipe, it really looked like maybe they could start pulling away if they kept getting some more kills and some more and being some more fights, but. It didn't happen. Once it happened, Mitras just sort of started grouping up more, uh, playing smart Dota, and just jo Jonet just gave away too many kills. So, right, guys, there's Jonet versus Mitras. We'll go and check that and see what game we want to cast next. And uh, yeah, hopefully, we can get some. I'm also sure there are other teams playing now. Dreams, Mitras. Well, we will go and see which game yeah. we're going to cast with you guys and we'll announce it on the main page the intermission screen do tell us if you like the new the intermission screen and yeah today's song requests are all about game soundtrack so you guys suggest it later on and well if you like the game it is me Lysander and it's God's Casting with me if you like my casting follow me on Twitch Twitter as well as Facebook all of them are Lysander Zenora so follow them and God's of course everyone knows you but you can plug yourself in as well if you want Oh, I'm on, I'm on Twitter. I'm BTS Gods, but yeah, be sure to check out Lysander. Big thanks for all the work you've done, helping out um, and just doing some work with us, as well as the cool. I, I love the new uh, the waiting screen here. So really cool to see that. Yep. All right. Uh, and big shout out to our sponsors. And yep, Gigabyte, Western Digital, Corsair, all these guys supporting esports. So big shout out to them. So alright guys, we'll be back with the next game. So stay tuned. Don't go away anywhere. And yeah, thank you guys, and see you guys next game.